Okay, hello everyone. We're here at the Hope Spot Gala, and this is Hope Learning Youth Webinars. We're here with Ms. Dr. Uh, Philip Gravenese from Youth Making Ripples. So, can you introduce yourself and a little bit about your organization? Sure. My name is Phil Gravenese. Uh, I'm a professor at Eckerd College, and um, Youth Making Ripples is a nonprofit that we started. Um, my wife and I, when we were in graduate school uh, at Florida Tech about 10 years ago. Um, and it's a, it's a film festival competition where middle school, high school, and college students can submit short uh, ocean conservation videos um, in a chance to win small scholarships. And the videos are uh, challenging students to create uh, conservation stories about marine issues that they're passionate about. It sounds like mm -hmm. a really cool program, and I hope to be a part of it someday. Yeah, that'd be great. We're always looking for new films. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, why did you start your organization? Sure. Um, it initially started as uh, educational outreach in our local community where we were doing our graduate degrees. And that first year, it just exploded. Um, and, and we got 100 submissions, and we've been getting about 100 submissions every year. Um, for now from all over the world, not just the United States. Um, and so that, that was our main goal, was to find a way to bridge the gap between the scientists and the next generation of ocean enthusiasts, um, middle school, high school students. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I'm excited to hear about more on your presentation sure. um, at the gala. So thank you yeah. for speaking with me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to be hearing next from Dr. Philip Gravenese, the founder of Youth Making Ripples. Dr. Philip Gravenese is an assistant professor in the Marine Science Department at Eckerd College. His research focuses on determining how climate stressors impact commercially important fisheries with a specific focus on the Florida stone crab. He co-founded the nonprofit Youth Making Ripples with Dr. Lauren Toth when they were graduate students at Florida Tech in 2012. Youth Making Ripples serves as a platform for both K-12 and college students to create short films that promote ocean conservation. Dr. Philip Gravity. Hello, thanks for having us again at the Hope Festival. We love being here. And, um, it's, a, it's a really great event and we're proud to be part of it. Um, you can go to the next slide. Did you want to start with the no, 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 you can go to the next time. Yeah, we'll end with the movie. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, my, my research interests focus on trying to determine how some of the species in the ocean might be impacted by future changes in climate. You can go ahead and click again, please. Um, and so I look at stressors like ocean acidification and elevated temperature and hypoxia or decreases in oxygen and also more recently some red tide work. And you can go ahead and click again, please. Thank you. And you can go again. And some of the species that I focus on are the commercially important crustaceans like the stone crab, a $30 million per year industry here in Florida, the spiny lobsters, which are $500 million per year. And then more recently, I've been starting to work with the Caribbean king crab, which is a target restoration species for um, NOAA's mission iconic reefs. They act as lawnmowers basically on the reef and help crop back some of the algae to allow space for corals to settle. Um, but I got my start in marine science just like our previous speaker, if you click again. Um, this was me, probably when I was six or seven years old, <laughs> in South Jersey, growing up with my grandfather, fishing off the, the docks off of Cape May. And I was that student, or the kid, that was always being drugged by their parents off the beach at the end of the day, because I didn't want to leave. And those experiences kind of catapulted me into dedicating my career into marine science. And um, you can click again. I spent some time teaching at the high school level before I went back for my PhD, and um, I did my postdoc down at Moat, and then eventually I, I landed here at Eckerd, where I actually, I'm very happy to be there. Um, but I try to emulate those experiences that I have with my grandfather and with my students, uh, whether it's research or in the classroom, and, and try to give them that same experience, because we all have that passion for the ocean when we get to be immersed in it. And in grad school, Youth Making Ripples uh, was started as a, an outreach component for graduate students. We thought we were going to get 10 submissions. In the first year, we got 100. 
And it was really inspiring to us that there were that many students that cared about the ocean. The next generation was wanting to share their stories. You can click again. So youthmakingripples.org, we've been a nonprofit for around 10 years now. Um, our email's up there as well, uh, youthmakingripples at gmail.com. Um, but we have an annual film festival and competition for K through 12 students. We get middle school entries, we get high school entries. They're judged individually or separately as separate categories. They can win small scholarships. This year was the first year we opened it up to college students. Um, and the, the submissions can be submitted any time throughout the year. Um, we also are dedicated to converting some of the research that our team does into open access education lessons for, for um, educators. And so those are also available on our website free for download. Um, you can go to the next slide. Our film resources are all also up on our website. We have had, since we started, about a thousand submissions. Um, so a thousand individual films made about ocean conservation by students from all over the world now. Um, but we try to supply all the information that you might need to help make a really impactful film by having tips from our board members. We have um, the rubric, how our films are judged. We have previous winning films on our website to allow you to see what the judges are looking for. So definitely share this with your family, your friends, um, your educators, because we want to hear the, their stories. So I'm going to let the students do the talking, because that's, that's what we're here for. We want to hear about the hope of Florida, or hope of the, the hope spot. And, and, um, this is last year's winner, Karen Norman. Um, she is a high school student down in the Florida Keys. Uh, and her film, The Life and the Death of Corals in Florida, um, won our high school competition. And so I'm going to sit down and let you all enjoy her film. So thanks again for having us. From the moment I was born, the Florida Keys has been my home. I've always been drawn to the crystal clear, beautiful blue waters. The feeling of entering a whole new world. A salty, serene paradise that made any other problems fade away the moment I dip beneath the surface. Full of diverse creatures who've established lives there since before humans even existed. Living together in harmony. left with a wasteland. 
I know what I'm saying sounds depressing. That's because it is. I mean, imagine you're me, watching my home and my future become desolate and dead. But not all hope is lost. By advocating for the reef, which cannot speak for itself, collecting data to learn more about these issues, cleaning up trash every chance I get, using reef safe sunscreen, removing invasive species, and much more. We have literal fractions of our Florida reef tracked for me. Maybe what I'm doing is making a difference, but alone, it won't work. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the actions we take as a global community. And it's about time we got started. <laughs>